Uh, my question is for Sama. What do you have to say to people like One Nation's Ian Nelson, who just last week said that Muslims are great so long as they assimilate with our culture? In today's society, do you think he represents the general Australian sentiment on this topic? Okay, Sama. Mm. Well, let me just say, um, you know, for those who charge Australian Muslims with crimes of, you know, not being able to assimilate and um, being extremists of sort, I would hope that people recognise that the majority of Australian Muslims are not represented by a minority of Muslim extremists. And I would also hope that the majority of conservative Australia is not represented by, you know, representatives like One Nation or, for instance, Scott Morrison or Cory Bernardi's scaremongering um, campaigns, which only serve to, frankly, create further divisions in our society. I'm more interested in what sort of you know, country we can create where minority groups, where marginalised uh, minority groups can come together and work constructively, where we can all be proud to call Australia home. And I don't think you know, myths that have been um, peddled by representatives from One Nation or otherwise, do anything to advance our national interest. Here, Zackerman, do you think uh, One Nation's views on Muslims are widely held in Australia? I'm Which totally unaware of One Nation's <laughs> views on anything, Tony. <laughs> uh, as far as they have no members of parliament uh, that I'm aware of, they seem to be quoted on the ABC at enormous length. But nowhere else, uh, maybe a little bit in the Fairfax press. To me... You obviously missed our program last week, the, so uh, we, can, we can move over that. They are an irrelevancy as far as they are concerned. I, I, I am disturbed, though, when I hear uh, uh, Summer saying that um, she hopes that uh, young Muslims will feel proud to be Australians, uh, as, if they, as if Australia is being held up to some sort of a test. I would have thought that all people in Australia have a, have a great affection for this country and for the values that it offers its, its citizens. Mm. Um, I, I, I'm disturbed that uh, Summer and her friends, or some of them anyway, <laughs> may feel that, uh, that they are totally outside broader Australia. Well, it's, Pierce, it's hard for me and my friends, let's say, um, <laughs> to, to create a sense of belonging and to, you know, strike a connection and affiliation with the Australian identity when we are told time and time again that, frankly, you're not integrating, you have to assimilate to our <coughs> way and our monocultural existence. Otherwise, well, leave. But let me just How get this right, Summer. You are an Australian ambassador to the UN, right? Mm -hmm. And yet you don't feel Australian? No, I absolutely feel Australian, but well, I'm saying that I, attitudes, I, attitudes, right, that you and, happen and to pedal as well. you're out there as a pinnacle of our youth, probably in one of the most envied jobs that a young woman can have, and yet you feel uncomfortable about representing Australia. Absolutely not, oh, and I good. did not say oh, that. Okay, I did okay. not say that. I'm very proud to represent Australia. Sure. Well, who are these right? people who but are I, not happy? If you can please let me finish, yeah. right? Mm. Yeah. Um, there are those who feel as though they are being further alienated and marginalised right, and targeted. Okay. I don't personally feel good. that way because I have the confidence and the support of my community. I've interacted with many Australians who are proud to actually take a more inclusive approach to our identity, who are proud to commit themselves to multiculturalism. I, go to the I other don't know side. where you stand on that, though. Uh, no, don't, don't invite a, a response. <laughs> uh, because I'm going to go to the other side of the panel. <laughs> Gretel. Well, we are feeling on the other side of the bench here. Um, and I, I guess... It, I, I think both of you make completely valid points. Pierce, I, I understand what you're saying. Why d is it someone's choice to feel that they are actually not part of a community? I guess my observation is simply the representation of Australia, and, I, and congratulations to you as being a UN ambassador. If I, if I can just refer to the most public, other than Oprah, uh, representation we had of Australia was that uh, Australia commercial, the television commercial, 
there's nothing like Australia. And do you remember the representation of it was because it actually didn't exist. They showed an Australia where there were three Aboriginal people, no Asian people, no Muslims, there were no Indians, there were blonde people, and that was about it. So if anything, if I can contribute to this argument, it's in a, a public representation of Australia, a lot of ethnic diversity is not included, and it must be very hard to feel Australian if you're not represented on television shows, movies, commercials, in, in many of the media outlets that we normally have. Is, it, is that a no, no, factor, oh, do you think? Again, no, no, I don't want you to ask a question either, because I want to hear from Bill Shorten. Um, the, going back to the, que the original question, which was about uh, One Nation, um, I don't quite agree with peers. Uh, well, that doesn't surprise, but um, <laughs> I don't quite agree that One Nation hasn't had an influence or doesn't have an influence. I think there's no doubt that in 1996, uh, when Pauline Hanson had her tilt, uh, she did change the bipartisanship which had existed about working through matters to do with immigration and multiculturalism. Um, I do think that in recent times, the um, not so, I don't know what goes on in the Liberal Shadow Cabinet, but uh, in terms of uh, what the Leader of the Opposition's Parliamentary Secretary, Senator Bernardi, said, where he said his problem wasn't with uh, Muslims, it was with Islam. I don't think that was a helpful comment because it's one of the big faiths of the world. <clears throat> now, I think that what's needed in the debate, and it's the opposite of one nation, is people come to Australia, they love this country. I don't think because someone wears a scarf or worships it in a different way, that makes them less Australian. What I do think is that um, the debate has gone to the polar extremes. And I think that what the government's been trying to propose, saying multiculturalism is OK, that doesn't mean that people come here and don't adhere to the laws of the land. That's obviously a prerequisite. I just think that we need to have uh, moving attitudes from intolerance to tolerance, and One Nation hasn't been helping that, and they've been a, a very bad influence in the last 15, 20 years. Malcolm Turnbull. Well, look, I think we are the most, I know, we are the most successful immigrant nation in the world. A third of the people in this city third of the people in, in, in Australia, nearly, uh, were born somewhere else, overseas. We've integrated every culture in the world, and we've done that because we define our national identity by a commitment to a shared set of political values. You don't have to look like anyone in terms of complexion or skin colour or dress to be an Australian. That is one of the greatest things, our greatest strength, as a multicultural nation, and that is the policy of my party, and I believe it's the policy of Bill's party, and if one nation doesn't like it, well, I agree with peers, they are irrelevant. OK, we've got a question down the front here. I'm just wondering, I hope that what you say is very true, Malcolm, but it just worries me that so much in the media, that there's so much vitriol against anyone that supposedly doesn't fit some Australian ideal. Um, why does that still exist if we're such a successful immigrant nation? Well, I think some people like to, you know, pour out a bit of vitriol, and there's or George Brandis, the Liberal uh, leader in the Senate, wrote a very good piece about this the other day, and he, you know, reminded people of how, you know, when the Irish, you know, gener a couple of generations ago, the Irish immigrants were all demonised and, you know, accused of being Fenian bomb throwers and so forth. You know, there's new every new wave of immigrants takes gets a little bit of of criticism. But, having said that, nonetheless, overall, we get on remarkably well, and I think we, you know, it is absolutely critical that we do not denigrate any faith, any culture, any race, uh, because, you know, they all have great strengths and all, we, you know, we might not might want to be a Muslim, might not want to be a Christian, might not want to be a Buddhist or a Jew, that's a matter of choice. But all of those different faiths add to our strength as a diverse nation. I just say this to you. If you look back at history over thousands of years, the most successful societies have been the most open societies, the most diverse societies. When societies have gone backwards, it is because they closed their door to the world. Look at what happened to China. It was the greatest power in the world for thousands of years. And then, you know, 500 years ago, they cut off foreign trade and went downhill and ended up being colonised by the Europeans. Okay, uh, and that, that right. example is it's repeated again and again through history. So right. openness, diversity, tolerance, the multicultural nation we are, that okay. makes us strong. Okay, we've got a web question. It's come in from... Uh... 
Come from uh, Sean Lawson in Turner in the ACT. Malcolm Turnbull, given the views of people like Scott Morrison and Corey Bernardi, does the liberal big tent now extend to include racists and bigots? Well, look, can I say the liberal big tent does not include racists and it does not include bigots. That's and, the answer. Yeah. Well, that's the question. I've answered it. And the question Are was, they in the tent? No, they're not. But the question was pointing at those two individuals. Well, I look, I, they're just having a go at, at uh, Scott Morrison and Corey Bernardi. I mean, Scott Morrison is a, is a very good guy, a very, a very sincere Christian, a very generous, loving fellow. Uh, you know, to describe him as a racist is appalling. Uh, Corey Bernardi made a, what was clearly an ill-judged remark about Islam, for which he has profusely apologised. You know, let's move on.